Now more than ever, innovative technologies are fueling change and sparking new ways of thinking. Collaboration between corporations and startups is key to staying at the forefront of these trends. However, finding the right startups can be expensive, time-consuming, and ineffective. But Plug and Play is here to help. As a corporate partner, you will gain access to a whole ecosystem of innovation. Discover startups that meet your tech interests. Stay updated on the latest trends and network with industry peers. We will help you during every stage of your innovation journey, no matter where you are and where you want to go. Get in touch today. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, I see that a few people are still trickling in, but I'm gonna get started with my opening remarks. Um, welcome to our personalized nutrition event. My name is Gabriela and I'm Senior Program Manager at Plug and Play Tech Center. And I'm responsible for coordinating the acceleration program with our food, food and beverage vertical in Silicon Valley. This is one of my favorite slides for Plug and Play. It shows where we started in a small building in Palo Alto, just renting out office space for early stage technology companies. We now have 20 industry specific accelerator programs across more than 30 locations globally. And we make over 200 investments each year, introducing those companies to some of the largest corporations in the world for piloting, commercialization and financial, financial deals. Um, today, we have over 30 offices around the world with over 600 employees dedicated to finding amazing startups technologies and connecting them with corporate partners to help them scale. And our food program has made some big strides in the past two years. Each one of our offices has its own dedicated team to find investing company, to find and invest in companies, as well as running its own accelerator programs. Through the sharing of our network within Plug and Play, the addition of each offices adds to the strength of our network. This is the agenda for today. We'll get started with our keynote speakers presenting for about an hour, followed by a Q&A session. Please type your questions in the Q&A chat box. And for today, we have both Emmett and Walter here from um, Finova, which is our alumni startup, and Emmett representing Hologram Science, which is DSM's backed personalized nutrition incubator. So I'm really excited to have you here. And with that, I will pass the word to both of you. Thank you for joining us today. It's a real pleasure and an honor to be here today with you. Uh, I'm very happy also to be joined uh, by Amit from Hologram Sciences. We hope to give you a very insightful overview of what is happening with wearable diagnostics in the space of personal nutrition. But before we go in there, I'd like to just say a few words on myself and I'll let Amit also introduce himself. My background is um, I'm based in Belgium, but I've uh, lived and worked in, in many parts of the world. I have about 25 years of experience in B2B sales, marketing and commercial management. And currently I'm the chief marketing officer at Finova. And I basically focus on globally uh, making Reducos uh, available. I will speak later about what Reducos is. Before um, uh, doing this job at Finova, I was uh, at DSM. I, I was working in Belgium, in Holland, in Switzerland, as well as in Singapore. And it was there really that I, I, I got stuck, uh, struck by something that I saw in Asia Pacific, which was the amazing prevalence of, of the diabetic issue. And really there were no good nutritional solutions for it, not in our portfolio. And I couldn't really see any uh, on the market. So I was really motivated to, to go out and find uh, ingredients, nutritional solutions that would make a difference for the issue of diabetes, but also for the issue of pre-diabetes, which is so common uh, everywhere in the world. So I'm very happy that I actually did uh, find this ingredient, which is reducose, which I will talk about later. But really, that is the, the reason why I'm so passionate about this topic. And you will see how this, how this solution also converges with personalized nutrition and with wearable technologies in this presentation. Amit. 
Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday. Uh, my name is Amit Tukarar, and I work in strategy at Hologram Sciences. I'll talk about Hologram later on in the presentation, but wanted to kick off with a similar to Wowchair personal story around why I'm excited um, about the potential of personalized nutrition and, and, and for this discussion today. Um, I grew up obese. Uh, and for a long time uh, in my life, basic activities like climbing stairs and going for a walk would leave me breathless and sweating. Uh, being overweight wasn't just contained to my physical health, but affected my mental health in, in ways that uh, I, I, I can't seem to put words to to this day. Uh, over the last four years, I've been on a journey to regain my health um, and through cobbling together resources on diet, exercise, uh, and being supported by the right community, I lost 20% of my body fat and have unlocked uh, a sense of self-worth that I've never experienced before. Um, in many ways, I think being on this journey has given me clarity into my life's purpose. Uh, and that is to like enable personalized health transformation at scale. Uh, that's why uh, I'm at Hologram and that's why I'm really excited for the opportunity to, to talk uh, in, in this forum today. Uh, my background is in consumer technology. Um, I spent the last seven years helping companies like Uber, Airbnb, and Lux Valet scale operations, enter new markets, uh, and become more efficient. And I'm excited to apply um, a lot of those skills uh, in a completely different environment today. Thanks, Amit. So here we go. Uh, the topic of, of personalization and the role of wearables. Um, if we really take a look from afar at everything that is happening in, in the world around this topic, and this list is by far not exhaustive, we see a number of, of trends and they're really all converging to the, to the topic of personalization. Um, we've had you know, personalization around us for a long, long time. You see personal trainers, you see cancer therapies now becoming uh, individualized. And of course, there is a lot of buzz around personalized nutrition. You have also the uh, biohackers community, which for a long time is, is making this quantified self movement, um, but it's still very niche, you could say. You have athletes and pro athletes that are very focused on, on uh, achieving better performance through the marginal gains theory, little tweaks, little improvements, which of course are very individualized. You have uh, governments, healthcare companies, insurance companies that are trying to live or make us live healthier lives by being more active. And of course, for them, it's about the business case because the more we can prevent becoming sick, the less costs they have. So there's, there's definitely a, an interest there too for them. And consumers are increasingly faced with uh, choices when they select foods, when they buy foods and eat foods. And I just put here a few labels of, of signals that um, or triggers even that consumers can find on product packaging when they eat stuff, buy stuff in, in supermarkets. Things like the Nutri-Score, now even Eco-Score, becoming very popular in Europe, basically in a very simple way, meaning uh, giving meaning to, is this product healthy for you? Is this product uh, helping uh, or not helping the planet? And also a seal, for example, which is very popular in Asia nowadays, which is the low GI seal giving a shortcut to consumers to understand this product has a high or low impact on my blood sugar. So these, these labels give you reasons to believe, but also reasons, reasons to reject. And finally, wearable diagnostics. I think everybody on this presentation has, a, probably everybody has a smartphone in uh, their pockets. Well, of course you can use that smartphone to track uh, your activities. You have fitness trackers, smartwatches uh, on, on the wrists, and they are becoming so prevalent and so uh, ubiquitous that we see really that the wearable diagnostics availability and the trends here will fuel the personalized nutrition uh, movement further. And that is what this presentation wants to uh, go deeper in. As an example of that convergence that Watcher was talking about, um, it was really interesting to see a lot of healthcare insurance companies or more progressive healthcare insurance companies um, leverage uh, wearable data to incentivize customers to live uh, healthier lifestyles. Um, and by incentivize, I mean, they're, they're literally providing spot bonuses to customers for achieving step goals or achieving heart rate goals or whatever it may be. And we thought that uh, level of, of feedback loop almost 
uh, was quite telling of how uh, diagnostics are being used today uh, to drive behavior change. Excitingly, in the realm of personalized nutrition, um, startups are really leading the charge of innovation in the space, um, chasing after a, quite a large and, and growing market. Um, large companies are, are starting to recognize the potential of personalized nutrition in their portfolios and their kind of go-to-market strategies, um, which has led to some really notable acquisitions in the space, um, of which we are lucky to be one. Um, Hologram Sciences was formed at the beginning of the year as a result of a $100 million investment by DSM into our uh, former into our former company. Um, and so excited to uh, have the opportunity to uh, work at a scale like that. So if we look from a distance at what's happening in the personal nutrition space, all these companies that uh, Amit just uh, showed that are active, you can actually uh, probably summarize two basic strategies that you see emerging. One strategy is what we call the boil the ocean strategy is, is companies that provide personalized nutrition solutions by wanting to know what your blood results and readings are. They want you to take pictures of your meals. They want your DNA profile. Basically, uh, it's a huge complex uh, collection of data, which they then uh, compute and give you recommendations or give you uh, product offerings. Um, very complicated, very sophisticated. Uh, we call them boil the ocean because they're trying to really do everything. It's super holistic. However, there's another approach which we see, which is what we call focused verticals meaning that those are offerings that focus on a specific endpoint. And we will zoom in on one such endpoint later today. But regardless of the strategy, the, the wheel, if you like, uh, that spins around or inside personalized nutrition offerings is always composed of two basic elements. The first element being that you need a way of measuring a, a health status and guide the consumer. And second, you then need to provide a solution. You offer a solution to the, to the problem, which of course then leads to again, measuring whether the solution has worked and this is how the wheel of, of personal nutrition spins. So always the same measure guide and solution providing and offering. So what we will do today is zoom in on one such focused vertical and that focused vertical is, is blood glucose. Now, why do we choose blood glucose? Because it, it's really a very important endpoint. It is a real-time biomarker that is affected by exercise, by sleep, stress, and of course, also by what we eat. And measuring blood glucose in uh, our day-to-day -day lives is a really good proxy for quantifying fitness, energy, and wellness. And of course, it's extremely personalized because nobody reacts in the same way to the same foods everybody is really individual and different. And the image we'd like to share here is this roller coaster ID. Every single person on the planet goes through this roller coaster every day simply by eating. And the quality of what you eat, the quantity of what you eat, uh, your personal conditions will make that your roller coaster ride is either a very wild and rocky slash unhealthy one or a smooth, gentle and slow roller coaster ride and that's that's really fascinating um, to um, to be able to measure that now when when people hear about blood glucose or blood sugar they always associate this with sugar and that's correct there is a lot of sugar in our processed foods nowadays and definitely sugar contributes a lot to high blood glucose spikes however the surprising thing is that actually it's not just sucrose or sugar, it is also refined starches. And gram per gram, refined starches actually have double the glycemic impact than sucrose has. This graph on the right is a picture from the New York, from the Singapore Straits Times newspaper, which showed that a 50 gram bowl of rice, which is really not a lot, in Asia people have five, six of those a day, a 50 gram bowl of rice is uh, increasing your blood sugar higher and faster than two cans of soft drink. So if you think about it, the exposure we have to both sugar in processed foods as well as to a lot of refined starches is, is pretty high. So there is a way 
of measuring uh, what happens to our body's blood sugar response in reaction to the foods we eat. And that technology is called CGM or continuous glucose monitoring. Fascinating technology because this is actually changing the lives of people who have diabetes. Uh, typically you have to do, when you have a diabetes patient, they will have to finger prick six, seven times a day. It's very nasty, it's very uncomfortable. Um, and this CGM technology, which basically is the size of a, of a big button, I'm holding one up here right now, it goes into your arm, stays there for about two weeks. You can take showers, go swimming with it, and you read off live your blood sugar response, your blood sugar roller coaster from your smartphone. So no more nasty finger pricks. It's still invasive. Um, it stays there for two weeks. And the great benefit is that instead of taking a finger prick snapshots, you get real time trend data, which of course gives much better insights. And you can share these insights. They're not only just living on your smartphone, you can share them with your doctor. So CGMs, and you, you see here on the left, a newspaper ad for one of those CGMs from Dexcom. I put this picture up because I thought it was very telling that this technology was just you know, in a, in a broadsheet newspaper there was a page wide advertising. So it, it's becoming very normal. So these CGMs are rev revolutionizing the management of disease of diabetes. But there is something very fascinating going on in this space. This technology of course can be, uh, can be found also on many biohackers who have tried it on themselves. They're not diabetic, they just want to measure, quantify itself and they use these uh, CGMs. But other people are starting to discover the potential of these CGMs. And so it's starting to improve more than just diabetics lives. This is a, um, a still from a video of um, a pro cyclist who's wondering why did the uh, UCI, which is the world governing body of cycling, why did they ban CGMs in competition? Well, the reason they banned it is because it has the power to change the results of races. So we're starting to see that pro athletes, athletes, are using these CGMs, they're not diabetic, but they use these CGMs as a way of measuring what their fuel stage is. So how can they optimally fuel their bodies for performance? So what you're seeing here is that CGMs are not only revolutionizing disease management, they are also revolutionizing performance management, which is quite fascinating to see. But it goes further. So recently you can find many startups that are layering, uh, we call it layering CGM tech. They are adding uh, literally a layer over the same technology that diabetics use. In this case, the Abbott Freestyle Libre uh, that I just held up here. They put a layer on top with branding. They put a layer on top because it, it helps to you know, play sports and not get it uh, scratched off. But they also put a layer over it in the form of an app of of uh, basically a device that gives you better insights in the data that comes from, this, from these technologies. And the positioning uh, is quite interesting. Here's an example from a, an Indian startup. The focus here is all about metabolic fitness. So it's no longer diabetes. It's no longer you know, making sure that you win races. It's about fitness, metabolic fitness. So we would call these kind of layered CGM technologies uh, biohacking deluxe. Instead of the niche biohackers, it's, it's becoming available for a, a broader uh, lifestyle audience. And here are a few more examples. Levels, US company, Super Sapiens uh, in, in Europe and also my levels in Europe. So you see here, uh, again, the same layered technology with a sticker and an app and the positionings, metabolic health, uh, endless energy, very interesting positioning. And this one is positioned for you to never have to diet because they give you insights in what foods to take, what foods to avoid. So again, very fascinating examples of, of biohacking deluxe. However, this is still quite lifestyle and quite expensive. But the breaking news here is this, and this is really, you know, watch this space literally. The technology is becoming miniaturized at a fast pace. And I would highlight one company in particular, Rockley, they're on the New York Stock Exchange. And they, come out, they came on very recently. And in their, new, in their SEC filing, they announced that Apple was their biggest customer. 
So the rumors have been um, around us for a while that Apple would, in one of their next watch iterations, would bring CGM technology. And this pretty much is the smoking gun that this is coming and that it is possible to bring this kind of technology to a wearable device that is um, no longer invasive and doesn't have to be replaced every two weeks. So that is going to be the game changer because this will enable uh, consumers to measure the glucose every day without having to do any nasty finger pricks or without having to do uh, difficult things with sticking things in their arm. So that's the game changer that is coming, maybe one or two more years, but it is coming. So summing up what we're seeing in this CGM uh, space, we believe it will thrive in three consumer use spaces, medtech, high-tech, and low-tech. The medtech will still exist in the future. Um, the CGM technology is, is really vital for survival in many cases of type 1 diabetics and type 2 diabetics in some cases. And even there, you see um, further evolutions. You see, for example, a company like Indigo Med, who are developing technology that gets injected under your skin, will stay there for two years and will measure very accurately your blood sugar response. Second, we see high tech. This is the companies we just gave you examples of. I found another company here from Israel, G-Wave. They claim they can do the same thing by using radio waves. And then of course, Rockley, who is going to put this in the Apple Watch or the Fitbits or the Samsung watches using uh, laser light. And then finally, you have also companies emerging, uh, which we would call low tech. Uh, we found a company here in Hong Kong, uh, Kiss and Tell is the name. It's basically a, a saliva stick you put in your mouth, costs about a dollar, a dollar and a half, so very cheap. And it gives you like a pregnancy reading, a reading of, of where you are with your blood glucose. So medtech, high tech and low tech, all three will, will coexist in the near future. But okay, great. That's, that's the state of the technology of CGM in this space of measuring blood glucose, a very important vertical, but, but now what? Well, if you go back to that wheel of personal nutrition, it's not just about measuring, which CGMs can do, or guiding, which these layered apps can do. It's also about uh, providing solutions to manage your blood glucose in a more healthy fashion. And do we need to provide a solution? Oh yes. I mean, diabetes is a huge issue. Uh, around the world, about a billion people are affected by diabetes and prediabetes. Prediabetes is basically the waiting room uh, to become uh, diabetic, and it has a massive cost impact on, on healthcare systems, which is also why, for example, in Singapore, the government has declared war, literally war on diabetes, because it's costing them an arm and a leg. So they want to prevent you from becoming pre-diabetic or diabetic. And the typical advice they will give you is you can change it through lifestyle changes, but lifestyle changes are the, are the hardest advice you can give to anybody. It's very, very difficult to achieve that. And this is where we'd like to present you Reducos, which, which is an ingredient that I discovered in my search for a solution, a meaningful solution to the diabetic issue. And that also is meaningful for healthy people. It's not just for diabetics, because what it does is um, it's an extract from white mold reliefs patent protected, it's using only water as an extraction uh, vehicle. It's more concentrated than generic extracts in the market. And most importantly, it has the backing of six human uh, clinical trials. And what these trials show is that a very small dose can reduce the digestion of sugar and other carbohydrates by up to 40%, which is a very significant amount. So what these clinical studies allow customers to do, B2B customers to do, is to make meaningful claims on nutritional products, personalized nutritional products, in the sense of healthy blood sugar, sustained energy, healthy weight, healthy heart, and lower GI uh, of glycemic index of, of foods. Now, the science is great, but the, it gets even better when you give reducos to people who are carrying the CGM technology. I have two case studies for you, uh, one in a diabetic patient carrying a, uh, a CGM. The top graph is the patient taking no reducos, so simply following the normal diet, 
Um, he did take long-lasting insulin and he gave us the data. This graph is coming straight from the device, by the way. So what you see is the, the usual state of his, of his life for a week. And interesting to observe is he always starts the day with a very high peak blood glucose, which is called the dawn effect. And another very important point to note is the traffic light warnings that the CGM technology gives the patient to warn when the roller coaster ride is becoming too wild, when the excursions are too high. So this patient um, took as an experiment one tablet of reducos in the morning. Uh, you can take with every carp rich meal a tablet of reducos, but he wanted to just try once and then test it with the same CGM technology. He kept everything the same, insulin injections the same, the diet the same. And what you could see is an immediate effect on lowering the peak blood glucose. So reducos works immediately. And um, the rest of the day, you can see here from the traffic lights, he benefited from that one tablet of reducos in the morning because he kept his blood sugar much better in balance. So it had an immediate and visible impact. He could see it on his CGM device on keeping his blood sugar roller coaster in a much more smooth and healthy status. So although he was taking everything from a drug perspective in the proper way, he took all the advices from his endocrinologist, he could still improve his condition by taking reducos. Now, the second case study is a healthy subject who also applied the, the same Abbott Freestyle Libre CGM device, took a peanut butter sandwich once before without reducos and then with reducos. He saw a very dramatic drop in peak blood sugar, 50% reduction, but also fascinating here, you could see that he was going through, uh, here's the sugar crash. This is where you get hungry. With reducos, you do not. This is what we would call sustained energy. So both for diabetics, as well as for healthy people who are trying to optimize their health, the, the reducos uh, solution is really meaningful and can be um, tailored personally, thanks to what you can see on the CGM devices. So summing it up uh, and, and laddering it up to the so what of, for consumers of reducos in the light of controlling and managing blood sugar, we really give back control with reducos to the consumer. The consumer will feel better and more balanced, think of the roller coaster. And with reducos by your side, you, you really have almost like a sugar buddy by your side. We have done some consumer research where it's clear that when people take great care of their meals uh, at home, they're never quite sure what is in the meals when they get food to come in or when they go out to eat. Now that worry about hidden carbs and hidden sugars is a, is a big problem if you want to live a healthy life. Now Reducos takes care of this problem because it will take care of those hidden carbs and sugars. And last but not least, it works immediately, lasts for about an hour. And you can see and feel the effect immediately. Uh, and the CGM technology that we'll, we're going to see breaking through in smartwatches will make this um, a blockbuster ingredient, frankly speaking. So that's the element of, of the CGM technology. I gave you a quick spin through the, the Reducos uh, solution and offer, but I want to hand over to Amit because we want to also show you where this can go further from a solutions point of view. Thanks, Walter. Um, I mentioned at the top of the call uh, that we were uh, founded at the beginning of the year as a result of an investment from DSM. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about uh, how solutions like Reducos or how treatment for conditions uh, or like what the future of treatment for conditions in a personalized nutrition format looks like. Um, DSM works with a wide variety of customers across industry sectors, right? Food and beverage, CPG, retail, and the like. When we discuss personalized nutrition with those customers, there seems to be a couple common themes. Uh, CEOs of these companies understand the value of personalized nutrition, but find it difficult to embrace because of, of, of small scale. Um, heads of strategy and corporate development um, have a more transactional kind of weight of C, weight and C approach. Uh, that they end up spending a premium on to acquire these brands later on down the line. Um, and then you've got motivated teams who are looking to experiment, but even if they are successful, they often struggle to bring these initiatives to scale where it becomes a core component of, of a company's strategy and on the radar of a senior executive team. For companies, personalized nutrition is 
often underfunded and difficult to scale up from a single brand to a global strategy. And we believe there's an opportunity to de-risk that exploration of personalized nutrition concepts, the risk around capital investment, the risk of not having core competencies in-house, the risk of opportunity cost of time, um, and even product market fit risk um, in finding the right solutions. There, we believe there is an opportunity to build an offering that enables companies to innovate faster and have a better overall return on their investments in the personalized nutrition space. And that's Hologram's mission, if you want to flip over to the next slide, Walter, to, keep, or to help companies validate personalized nutrition opportunities. And we do that by building end-to-end -end brands around various health conditions that feature diagnostics, digital platforms, and product formats that best serve consumers within a single solution, as opposed to having to cobble these things together. We invest our own capital um, or partner with companies to build these concepts and have all the core competencies to move quickly, take on early risk, and find strong product market fit. While complementary to a company's in-house innovation or R&D strategy, we operate one step removed to focus on speed. Um, if it works, it comes closer to a company's brand. Um, and then ultimately, we believe that this model will allow companies to explore new solutions quicker and more cost-effectively um, and act as an early stage license or M&A channel for innovation. So let me, let me share an example with you, Watcher, if you want to click over to the next slide. Um, our first brand was launched in May of 2021, um, and it's called Develop. Develop is a holistic immunity-focused brand um, that features a vitamin D ingredient manufactured by DSM. It includes an at-home blood test um, for the diagnostic component, uh, digital feedback on improving overall immunity through diet, sleep, and exercise contained in an app, um, and recommends various products to help people feel more secure in their health as they step back into the world. From start to launch, this was an 80-day process to bring this brand to market, and it goes well beyond just a basic website. This is a dedicated legal entity with full direct consumer advertising and e-commerce capability, quality controlled products, and end-to-end -end logistics, including customer fulfillment. Look, I think brands... Um, building brands is hard work and takes time. Um, but we believe that our fast paced speed to market unlocks a degree of experimentation that allows us to take in customer data to make the necessary adjustments to find product market fit really quickly and tie back into that de-risked innovation strategy that I mentioned earlier. On the next slide, I'm going to show you a little bit about how the sausage is made. Um, this, is our, uh, this is our digital platform. Um, this digital platform took uh, over three years to develop um, and, and takes a substantial amount of inputs on the left side of the screen, um, like diagnostics and wearables covered in today's presentation, um, across nutrition, health, and biomarkers to make sophisticated recommendation based on rule sets that are specific to certain conditions. Um, these recommended diets, lifestyles, and products um, are also supported by a dedicated coaching platform of humans so that, you know, people, consumers are not left to interpret the results of a diagnostic test, are not left to guess when to take a product or a supplement, um, and can ask their questions of a, of a certified dietitian. Um, this backend allows us to scale the technology and overall service offering without significant amount of investment for every, every new company that we build under the hologram platform um, and can be adjusted from general wellness applications to more specific chronic health conditions as necessary. Um, I, think it's, I think it's really important to talk about this slide uh, as, as, as a system, right? You've got this input of all of this data that is interpreted by these protocols and by this recommendation engine delivered to customers in an engaging format through a coach. And then finally, the outputs of those recommendations can span everything from lifestyle to meal planning to product supplement recommendations and the like. Um, but the, the, the point that I'm trying to make here, and if you go to the next slide, Wouter, is that this platformization approach 
to building out personalized nutrition solutions um, is one that we think sits in between this boil the ocean strategy, which tends to overpromise solutions to customers, and this focused vertical strategy, which results in spot solution fatigue, where there's only so many options within a single category that a consumer can consider. Um, we believe that there's a, a human coached platform that sits in between those two approaches um, that feels like it would be the most effective way to drive uh, desired customer health outcomes at scale um, and in a cost-effective manner. Awesome. I think you're on mute, Watcher, but I, I, I just want to say on behalf of both of us, thank you both. For, thank you all for the time today. Uh, Gabriella, thank you for hosting us. Uh, this is our contact information. Please don't hesitate to reach out. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. This was such an insightful presentation. I, I appreciate both of your time. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm going to launch a poll really quickly just to collect feedback on the presentation. And then um, we have a Q&A session starting now. Feel free to chat to type in your questions in the Q&A chat box. You can also raise your hand if you want to speak and I will, I will unmute you. So cool. Feel free to type your questions in the Q&A chat box so we can go ahead and get started with our Q&A session. Looks like we have a question. Um, Apple has recently divested the health app. Is this stage you see an impact in their initiatives? Sorry, Gabriela, could you repeat the question? Um, Apple has recently divested the health app. Is this a stage? I, I assume this is a stage, the first and shortened word. Uh, you see an impact in their initiatives? Um, well, I, I, of course, I can't talk on behalf of Apple, but um, what we tend to see is that Apple is, is going to pack their uh, Apple Watch, at least, mm -hmm. with an increasing number of features. And the, as I said in the presentation, the rumor mill on having CGM technology included is extremely high. And we believe that uh, through the addition of, of Rockley technology, this will come. So I, I do not think that Apple will do less in health. I think they will do more in health in the future. Okay, perfect. How will the data presented through the wearable interfaces, example, Apple Watch or Samsung Watch, uh, fit your recommendation in Gene? And will the customers be getting two different feedbacks? Yeah, I, I think that's a question for, for kind of the hologram platform. That's an awesome question. Thanks, Visible. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to go back, Wouter, uh, just a, a couple slides, I want to make sure this is like super clear um, to, the, to the digital platform slide. Um, essentially, we, we think of um, Apple Watch and Samsung Watch inputs um, that come from wearables into the recommendation engine that I mentioned earlier. So if you think of develop, develop is powered by an app, right? And in this world of collecting data inputs from customers, uh, there's two methods. There's this passive method where I can record your steps, your heart rate, and all of the inputs, right? Like Walter was talking about potentially even a blood sugar that's going to be measured in, in the Apple Watch in the future. I could take all of those inputs, pop them into a recommendation engine in a self-contained way um, that uh, that doesn't require you to provide any manual additional inputs. A big issue, you know, or a big challenge space that we see this uh, exist in is around food, right? Like food blogging is one of those things that every weight loss app company has struggled with dramatically in the past because, okay, great. Let's say I'm super motivated and I'm going to pull out my app every time I like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm eating a meal. The reality is, is for me to measure the ingredients to ensure that they're accurately matched and that they're giving me like, like good data is very hard and frankly, very like onerous on the customer. And so I think like the point that, that I was trying to make here simply is yes, like Apple and Samsung will continue to have their own recommendation engines in health app and the like, right? Uh, but, but this use of passively tracked wearable data can be a lot more actionable when applied in a certain in, in a certain solution, um, as the example that I gave earlier. And so, hopefully that uh, hopefully that clarifies. This approach feels a lot more actionable with the output 
um, suite of recommendations that we've built than you know the Apple Watch that shows you a nice chart over time. Yeah. Thank you. Um, my question is also to you, Emmett. Um, you said boil the ocean nor spot solution are not what people want. Could you talk a little bit more about the middle ground, what the middle ground looks like? And yeah, uh, the spot solution develop is a spot solution, right? Awesome question. Yeah, awesome question. We should, we should probably clarify, right? I think like, like Wouter and I were really nerding out when we prepared for this presentation. I think the center of that conversation was around, look, we've got a lot of companies that are taking this um, overarching general health strategy, right? Where sometimes it feels like science hasn't even caught up to the recommendations that some, some of them are making, right? And then on the other end, you've got these focused vertical companies that are all competing with one another. And in the long run, this, this slide thinks about like maybe the five, 10 year time horizon here, right? Um, in the long run, when you think about like customer acquisition and when you think about economic efficiency and when you think about value to customer and simplification for customer, if you've got 20 spot solutions, focused on acquiring the same customer, right? And there's no like real differentiation between any of them. There's an opportunity we believe to platformize the recommendations here where it's like, great, if you are a man in his thirties and you're, 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 or you care about weight loss, you care about immunity and you care about healthy aging, right? There is one platform that takes all of these inputs, develops recommendations that are actionable in the output section. Um, and that platformization is what we get really excited about. Anything to add to that, Walter? I know you had a, a, a cool set of thoughts on that one too. Yeah, and, and I was going to say, and of course, the human coaching element, which should, uh, should not be forgotten. I think a lot of the current personalized nutrition solutions are, are very much, uh, yeah, you could say stuck in tech. It's all about uh, the, the, the tool side of things, the technology side of things, the, uh, the IT side of things. But let's not forget about the fact that people are generally very confused. Consumers don't see the forest through the trees anymore. And even if you have great diagnostics that give you great data, that doesn't mean that you have great insights. So we truly believe that in the future, actually, the human element will become very important. I think that's what the hologram science uh, ecosystem, if you like, makes, makes uh, so good, is that there is this the army of, of human coaches that can really guide you, uh, not just with what you've learned from the tools, but also with their personal advice to you. Yeah, and I think that piece around engagement is key, Roger. Thanks for calling that out, right? This idea that I'm not left to interpret the inputs, right? As someone who's not trained to interpret the inputs, but can rely on uh, you know, a professional to help me navigate that journey is a really critical piece to, to, to how uh, we can drive better outcomes for, for people. Awesome. Thank you. Um, apart from glucose, any other measurement you see in the future? And to add up to that, how hologram connects to the Apple Watch data? A little bit different questions, but the same person asked both. So. Yeah, I think um, maybe I'll take the first part of the question. So the uh, it's interesting to note that the Rockley article I, I mentioned, which is allegedly going to go into the Apple Watch and maybe also in, in Fitbit and other watches like Samsung, uh, they can also with the same laser technology uh, used, not only measure blood glucose response, but also, for example, hydration. So the, the technology will open up a number of other uh, health benefit fields, uh, again, which is great because then it becomes a more holistic uh, approach. But then we still have the same problem to, to solve, which is that, okay, you have all this data. So now what, how, how do I interpret this data? How, how do I act on the data? How do I improve my health uh, thanks to the data? And then again comes the model that hologram science has proposed, which is that the human coaching element will help you uh, get to meaningful improvements. Yeah, I think to add to that, right, like the, 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 the piece that gets me really excited is there's no shortage of metrics that these wearables are, are not going to measure, right? I think like sit stand time, like all of these things that are like leading indicators of chronic disease or whatever it may be, right? Um, these, these technologies are only going to get better and better from a, from a tracking perspective, which means that then uh, and, and, and Alexandre, to answer your question, we, we connect to Apple Watch data through API, right? Um, but, but the idea here simply is that like with this wealth of data, I can now track uh, all of these metrics passively instead of having to ask a customer what they ate 
right? In order to get their like blood sugar readings or blood sensitivities, I can ask, I can, I can measure the hydration of a customer without asking them how much water uh, they drank today, right? And these, these passively tracked pieces that result in really meaningful recommendations is what differentiates these approaches, right? That are interpretive and then supported by a human layer of, of, of interpretation as well. So there needs to be like a technology rule set that is focused on conditions that is interpreted by a professional uh, that is not left to the consumer to, to interpret. And, and, and these wearables are only going to continue to enhance the offering there and the value. Gabriella, there's also a question in the Q&A. Uh, yes, I was just going to read that off. Could you okay. expand on the actual interest shown by Apple in this technology, please? Yeah, so that question I would again answer with the, the Rockley slide, um, the SEC filing uh, mentioned, so public information that it was the, uh, the single biggest customer they have is Apple. So they, we can't talk again for Apple, but I think they really are, are going to do this. And they're not going to be the only one. There's, there's almost like an arms race going on in the wearable uh, technology space to get glucose monitoring going. And, and let's not forget where this technology came from. Um, and that's actually the second question in the Q&A. Um, Gabriela, if I can just continue with that one. Oh, great. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just read it. Uh, any views on what are the next generations of innovations coming in the CGM wearable space? So I, I covered that largely in my deck. Uh, the technology provided by Dexcom, Abbott, and likely uh, non-invasive smartwatches uh, such as Apple is working well. So wondering what else could be brought to the general population as opposed to pre-diabetics and diabetics for which there is already a real need. So the, the answer to that uh, for me is really the non-invasive piece. So the fact that these uh, Dexcom, uh, Abbott, Medtronic devices currently, number one, they're very expensive. Uh, number two, they only last for two weeks and then you have to replace them. Often it's not affordable for people unless they're reimbursed. Uh, so these technologies are really for the, the diseased population plus the biohackers and of course the, the pro athletes, uh, of course, as well. What is going to change is that this technology becomes much more affordable and much more um, broadly applied by, by people who are not necessarily diseased or not necessarily trying to win the Tour de France. So it's, it's people who are genuinely interested and understand that managing blood sugar is important understanding that that knowing how your body responds to eating a banana which will be different for me than it is for you understanding how your body responds is is meaningful because then you can make choices in what you eat when you eat uh, how you exercise look at how sleep affects your blood sugar so for me it's really two parts it's it's the cost that will go down and it's the fact that it's non-invasive because Having a needle in your body still puts a lot, a lot of people off. Some of the lifestyle param parameters are probably going to be provided by different devices slash applications. Are you suggesting that a user has to connect those apps slash databases to your platform? I think this question should omit. Uh, please help understand how this world will work for a user potentially. Yeah, totally. If you want to go back again, Walter, one more slide. Uh, that would be awesome. Thank you very much. So essentially what, what, I, what I'm showing here right, is like there are a variety of inputs that can be plugged into the digital platform that does the uh, interpretation and the recommendation, right? Um, those inputs can span anything from like literally a, a lab diagnostic, um, wearable data, uh, and then and then lifestyle inputs that are inputted by a user. Uh, but all, all of these are, at least the first two categories are, are plugged in by API. And so anything that can plug into a technology platform, whether it's, 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 uh, it's, it's a technology integration or frankly, even just like a user-driven input. Um, my point here simply is that all of these inputs can be used to make recommendations um, based on what, what category we're focused on, based on what user uh, needs are and frankly, like what what outcome they're looking to drive. Thank you. Um, next question for Walter. Um, what is the next step so far as Finova is concerned? Well, um, we have a, a fantastic product that is backed already by, by six human clinical studies. We will continue to build on the on the clinical evidence. Um, it's really cool to see that some of our largest customers have done their own clinical studies with Reducos. And in each of these studies, they have used the CGMs. So the, the CGM devices actually are very 
handy also from a, from a clinical study point of view. Um, so the future really is about uh, making the product available to more and more consumers. And uh, in combination with CGM technology that will become more ubiquitous, consumers will actually receive the benefit, feel the benefit and, and observe the benefit if they take reducos. Uh, as I said, it works immediately, lasts for about an hour. Whatever you eat during that period will benefit from reducos. So uh, as I started in my presentation, I'm, I was really looking for a solution that would meaningfully impact health of people, be it diabetics or non-diabetics. And I really believe that Reducos is that product. Thank you. Um, would you be able to do microbiome or gut health type of device? Um, mm, good one. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, I think anything that plugs in via API into, into technology so that the data can be interpreted can be integrated into the way that we treat a condition. But all of it, like I think, I think the, the point that I really want to drive home, right, um, is that all of it has to stem from like consumer need. What like what is the consumer trying to get out of a personalized nutrition experience, right? In the in the case of, of develop, uh, it's focused on improving an individual's immunity. Um, and 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 what is the best uh, support infrastructure across inputs and outputs that enables them to improve their immunity, right? And so can, can, can a, a, a microbiome test um, or a wearable be integrated into an experience in the future that focuses on a category that, that, that relates to GI? Absolutely. But it all stems from user needs. Personalized nutrition and the data from wearable devices more focused on achieving is personalized nutrition and the data from wearable devices more focused on achieving lifespan or health span. And do you think the consumer will have the ability to own and perhaps monetize your data in the future? That's an interesting question. It's a really interesting question. Two, two questions, right? So, um, yeah, on lifespan and health span. Personally, I think it's about health span, not lifespan. Um, you know, I've done a lot of presentations on healthy aging. I used to say it's not about adding years to your life. It's about adding life to your years. And um, in that sense, the, definitely, these, these uh, wearable, non-invasive diagnostic devices helped with human coaching. Absolutely, that's the end game, is to, uh, is to make sure that people live healthier, uh, fuller lives. And, and really can unlock their full potential. Um, so yeah, that's for me is, is clear. It's health span, not so much life in itself or years to life. Uh, regarding the data, yeah, uh, Amit, please chip in, but I, th I think that is going to be an, a very interesting uh, element of the future. Who owns the data and, and can you monetize it as an individual? Yeah, I mean, this, is, this is an awesome question, Stefan. And, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pause it like a thought, right? Not that I know the answer, but I, I, I've been reading some really interesting stuff about um, genomics and, you know, some of the, the, the companies in the genomics space, like Ancestry and, and, and 23andMe and how they're like monetizing user data on their behalf. Is there a way to flip that switch and turn it around so that the user is able to, 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 to profit off of like sharing their data, perhaps? Um, I just, I think that like, we're already seeing lenses into how user health data can be monetized. And I think privacy adds a completely new level of complexity into, into this conversation. Um, that's important to consider. Uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, do, do, could I envision a future in, in, in which like a user can own their data powered by, you know, blockchain technology and monetized in that way? Absolutely. Um, I, I'm, Absolutely loving the audience audience engagement. This is amazing. Um, Edra actually um, introduced herself. Hey, I am Edra Abella. I'm the founder of HDROP Technologies and working on hydration, hydrate, hydration space. Uh, where do you think is the line between giving the user actionable data slash feedback and giving them actual diagnosis? Where What are the implications? And I can see the coaching aspect being close to that diagnostic or something like that. Yeah, Adria, awesome question. Um, I, I, I wanna be really clear, right? Like th there's no diagnosis happening here, right? This is like a medical, this is medical advice. It is not, you know, it, it is not a doctor, right? That is generating these, these, uh, these recommendations, right? They're recommendations, they're not diagnosis. Um, and so I think, 
it, it's like very important to make that distinguish uh, distinguishment. Yeah. Cool. And um, can you, as an next step, for example, um, envisions making the radicals last longer than one hour? Yeah, great question. Um, I have to explain a little bit uh, how the mode of action is of, of reducos. The, the whole magic is that um, when you eat and your, your stomach empties the semi-digested food in the small intestines, you have enzymes that are located there that are designed to chop off like scissors the glucose bits from your food. Reducos looks like glucose tricks the enzymes in thinking that they're dealing with reducose and enzymes are like a keys and, and, and locks. So they grab, they try to figure out reducose. While they're doing that, 40% of your food continues through the small intestines undigested because the enzymes are, are busy with reducose. So after about an hour, they give up, they let go. And that's when reducose gets absorbed through the gut wall because it's small enough to be absorbed. It gets out of the way. So the magic is done in an hour because it gets absorbed. And that's a unique selling point, a new point of difference with other carb blocking products who, that stay in the gut and will cause side effects at the bottom of your bottom. We don't because we have gone. Uh, so Redugos acts early, acts only once, and then triggers a cascade of benefits. So to answer the question, therefore, it wouldn't work to make a long lasting reducals. And we don't want that because we don't want it to stay in the gut because we don't want it to trigger side effects. Now, the cool thing about reducals is if you take it in the morning, for example, you will set up your day to start in low GI mode. And when you do that, not only with children, for example, and people who are professional work, uh, get attention benefits, uh, concentration benefits, because it's proven that if you start your day in low GI, you will, you will have better concentration, better attention span. You won't be hangry at 11 o'clock, feeling like a snack. You'll bridge better between the meals. And then it comes, there's a, a scientific effect of, of starting the day in low GI. You get what's called the second meal effect. So that's why we recommend only to take reducos in the morning and in the evening, because at lunch, you will still benefit from having started your day in low GI. No need to take a long acting or long lasting reducos. You get it for free as a bonus. And since we're talking about radicals, um, Chris is asking if it is intended that radicals will become available over the counter or under a, 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 like a pres prescription slash order of a doctor. Great question. So radicals uh, is already available, not as an OTC or prescribed uh, product. It is available as a supplement. It is available as a food and beverage ingredient. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's a very uh, easy product in the sense that it's a plant extract, so it can be put into all kinds. Of, it's a small dose, 250 milligrams, so it can be put in, in supplements, for example. So in the United States, you have a company that is called Sugar Break, sugarbreak.com, and I warmly invite you to check out their website. You can buy products containing reducos from them. Uh, GNC has a healthy blood sugar formula. It contains reducos. There's a product called Stay Low in the United States uh, that is also 100% uh, reducos. Um, so there's, there's a number of uh, consumer offerings, and I've highlighted a few examples in the US, but we're really going to make reducos globally available. Um, one of the largest food companies in the world is launching in October with reducos in Asia Pacific. So we're going to see more and more products uh, that are very easily available to consumers with reducos. Awesome, thank you. And earlier on, we were discussing a little bit about the data inputs and Catherine is asking here if we do need all those data inputs to make meaningful dietary and lifestyle recommendations. I think it depends really heavily on the category, right? Um, depending on what the, the desired output is, that's what drives the, the required inputs. And so, uh, you know, case by case, the answer is gonna be very different. Awesome. Looks like that was our last question. So, um, oh, wait, we have one more. So let's wrap up with this last one. Um, what app do you recommend that is in the hologram? Um, if you go back one slide, Walter. Um, uh, Alexandre, if you check out Develop Immunity, Develop Immunity is live currently in the United States. Um, and it uh, features, uh, like I mentioned, uh, on the far right, 
there's a blood diagnostic test that measures uh, an individual's vitamin D levels. That blood diagnostic test results are interpreted in the app that you see in the center. And then on the left, we've got a suite of three products uh, that we have on the market right now. So uh, you can check out developimmunity.com and then also download it uh, in the app store as well. Awesome, thank you. So it looks like that's a wrap. Thank you so much, Emmett and Valter. This was a really insightful discussion. Um, I'm really appreciative of your time and I'll be sharing the recording after the event and um, hope to see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you for the very much. Thank you.